Wow, he's not looking good. I now know it's killing the frogs up in California's mountains, a disease called chytrid. But where it came from remains a mystery. To answer that, I need to do a little detective work. Scientists believe chytrid first started killing frogs in North America in 1961. One by one, frogs in other continents started dying too. In fact, the only continent with amphibians that hasn't reported chytrid is mainland Asia. But the really big clue lies in Africa. In 2004, a group of scientists went to several museums in southern Africa and analyzed nearly 700 preserved dead frogs, some 100 years old. They made a dramatic discovery. The first case of chytrid in Africa appeared in 1938, 23 years before it showed up anywhere else. The infected frog was one of these right here. This is the African clawed frog, Xenopus lavis. This frog may look harmless enough, but there's a very real possibility that it is carrying the deadly chytrid fungus, the same fungus which is wiping out California's yellow-legged frogs. These frogs live throughout much of Africa. They've been exposed to the chytrid fungus for decades and have now developed resistance to the disease. They simply carry it around in their backs, transporting the lethal fungus wherever they go. But the issue of concern with this African clawed frog is we're not in Africa. This is a pond in California. So the million dollar question is, what is this frog doing here? It all began in 1934. Long before women could buy over-the-counter pregnancy tests, scientists developed an ingenious technique using the African clawed frog. They discovered that if you inject one of these frogs with urine from a woman who's pregnant, her hormones will cause the frog to ovulate, confirming the woman's pregnancy. After this incredible discovery, thousands of African clawed frogs were exported around the world for laboratory research. Hidden within their skin was the killer fungus. These non-native frogs have been carelessly released from laboratories and also through the pet trade, and now are well-established in the wild, like here in California. Eric Larson from the Department of Fish and Game has a real problem on his hands. He thinks there are hundreds, if not thousands, of African clawed frogs in this pond, and he's trying to get them out. These frogs are known carriers of the chytrid fungus, and that can carry from one location to another. As the populations in a pond like this expand, the, uh, the frogs disperse, and they can carry that chytrid fungus to a native environment where there may be yellow-legged frog or red-legged frog. Because of the spread of the African clawed frogs, native frogs all over the world are now being exposed to chytrid, and they are dying. There are countless reasons why we need to protect our planet's amphibians, especially when it comes to the environment and biodiversity. But the thing is, human beings, we benefit from amphibians as well, especially with medicine, where there's a really big payoff. Chemicals derived from frog skin are used to make many different medicines for people, such as antibiotics, painkillers, treatments for ulcers, and for high blood pressure. And frogs are even proving critical to the latest developments in cancer research. At the University of California, Berkeley, Professor Tyrone Hayes is learning that frogs have a lot they can teach us about hormones, breast cancer, and possible links to pesticides like atrazine. The hormone imbalance created by atrazine, the decline in testosterone and increase in estrogen, is causing these males to first become sterile and some of them completely transform into females even though they're genetic males. What is the connection between the impact on frogs and the impact that atrazine could have on our species? Yeah, the testosterone and the estrogen that are affected in these animals are the exact same hormones that are present in us. 
Examine and high levels of estrogen in humans is known to be linked with breast cancer and maybe prostate cancer. And here's the real kicker. The level that atrazine is causing breast cancer cells to make estrogen, the levels that causes infertility and that cause sex reversal in our frogs are levels that are equivalent or lower than what's allowed in our drinking water right now. So these studies with frogs are showing us that chemicals considered safe in our drinking water may in fact be linked to certain cancers. Clearly, there's a lot we can learn from amphibians, which makes it so important that we save them. But it's not just frogs that are dying. Salamanders are suffering too. To find out why, I must leave California and head to the rolling hills of Missouri in search of a creature so bizarre, it's called the hellbender. See some? Look. What percentage of amphibian species are threatened with extinction? Is it A, 10%, B, 25%, or C, 33%?